In the previous two tutorials, we discussed the filter method of arrays and the map method. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how to reduce the elements of an array to a single value using the reduce method. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Now, the reduce method is another fundamental part of JavaScript that you need to be aware of when working with arrays. Reduce allows you to cycle through all the elements of an array and act on each element using a function so that the end result is a single value. So if you need to combine the elements of an array in some way, you should use reduce. As mentioned with reduce, you pass in a function just like you do with filter and map. But you also pass in another value. And the function you pass in to reduce needs to accept an additional parameter. So let's take a look at it. All right, here I have an array that consists of scores. These are scores from some activity. A total of eight scores. Now let's say we want to get the total of all those. Well, obviously you could use a loop to cycle through and add those together. But reduce can do this for us. So let's set that up. I'm going to assign the total to this variable, total. We set that equal to scores dot reduce. We access reduce just like we do map or filter. And if you haven't viewed those other tutorials, I'll include a link in the description section of this tutorial. Now we need to pass in a function. Let me just set up the body of the function. There we go, we have our function. Now as mentioned with reduce, we have more parameters that we deal with than we did with filter or map. With filter and map, we simply had a parameter that stored the value of each element in the array as it cycled through them. So the first time through it would be 100, then 90, and 85, and so on. And so we do have that parameter. But we also have another parameter. And this is the accumulator value. So as we are cycling through this array and we're doing something to it, we have a second value. And this is the result of the last time we went through this function. So, for example, the first time through the array, we pass in 100. It goes here. Well, we may do something to that 100 and then attach it to the accumulator value. And so that in increments this accumulator value. And then the second time through, we get 90 in, and we also get the results of the last time we cycled through and did something to 100. And so that continues, that accumulator value continues to be passed into the function. And so if we were to get the total, we would simply do return ACC plus val. Now see, see how that works? We are returning these two values added together. So the next time through, the result of adding those together gets passed into this. And then we add the next value to it. And that gets passed in again. Then we add the next value to it. And it goes like that all the way through the array. Now, what is the value of this the very first time? When we go through the array and we pass in 100, what is the value of this accumulator the first time through? Well, that is the second thing we pass into the reduce function. And we're going to say that the initial value is 0. So we have a function we pass in to reduce. And then we have an initial value that we pass in to reduce. Those are the two things. Now within the function, we have an accumulator value parameter, and we have a variable to represent each value in the array as it's passed in. Those are the two things we need to have. All right, let's go ahead and save this and look at what our total is. So if I refresh, and then I open the console. I can take a look at total and we get 545. All right, let's do another example. This time, let's get the average. So I'm going to set that equal to scores.reduce. 
And so this part's going to be pretty much the same. I have the accumulator, I have the value. Here's the body of the function. We return the accumulator plus the value. And then the initial value of the accumulator is zero. And then to get the average, when that's all done, we simply divide it by scores.length, like that. Let's see how that works for us. So if we get average, 68.125. All right, now I want to show you another way to do average. And the reason I want to show this method is because it allows me to illustrate how we can pass additional values into the function. Just like with filter and map, in addition to the value that is passed in, we can also pass in the index and we can, and we can pass in the original array. All right. So here we go. We'll do ave2, set that equal to scores.reduce. And then we're going to pass in a function. And we have the accumulator value. We have the value from the array. We have the index. And we have the original array. We can get all of those passed into the function in case we need them. Now, obviously, we need to indicate the initial value of the accumulator. So I will do that here. Now here's how we'll do the average. And those of you that are a whiz at math, you can indicate in the comments whether this is correct math or not. I, logically, this seems fine to me. You guys can let me know. So here's what we would do. Return, I know at least it works in this example. Return the value divided by the array. Remember, this variable here is the original array scores. And it gets passed in, and we can just get the length of that, like that. And that gets added to the accumulator value, like that. So basically, we take the individual average to the whole for each of these scores, and then add them together. Save that. Refresh, let's get AVE2 this time, 68.125. And so that allows me to show you that, yes, just like with map, we can pass in index and the original array as well, just like we do with map and filter. All right, one more example to show what's possible with reduce. Let's say we wanted to just get the highest score from this array. Let's do that. Let high score equal scores dot reduce. Here's our function. We're going to pass in accumulator and value. All right. Now, in the body of the function, here's what we want to do. We want to use an if statement this time. If the value is greater than the accumulator, then what do we do? Well, then we return value. See how that works? If the value is greater than the accumulator, then we'll return it. And that will then be the accumulator the next time through. We have to, of course, enter an initial value. So we start with zero on the accumulator. So the first time through, um, it's going to find a number. If it's greater than the accumulator, it will return it. Else, it will return the accumulator. Okay. So if the accumulator is greater, we want to return that. And this will get us the highest score. So if we save that, refresh, high score, that equals 100. All right, now, how do we know that it just didn't get this one first and then didn't really work after that? Well, there is a companion method to reduce, and it's called reduce right. Now, reduce right works exactly like reduce with the exception that it starts on the right side of the array. So it would start with 75 in this example. So let's just reverse that and see what happens. Refresh, I score, and we still get 100. And so that logic works for us. It starts with zero. Anytime it finds something greater than zero, it returns it. 
Otherwise, it returns what it already has. That's how that one's working. So, in, in conclusion, when you're working with an array and you need to accumulate those values in some way, look at using reduce instead of using a loop. Before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find the tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right now or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. I have full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.